Hey, guys and gals. So heading back into the lab today. And the idea behind this lab is that we're trying to connect two separate ideas. Last week, we tested the properties of a gas. It was oxygen. Okay. And we were checking for things like fluidity and expansion and diffusion uh, and things of that nature. We, in concluding that lab, hopefully you guys realize that that oxygen did all of those things. Uh, what we want to see today is, is if I change the identity of a gas from oxygen to hydrogen, does it affect any of those properties, right? Do every single gas that we study possess the same characteristics? Right? So our goals of this lab are fairly similar to last time with one addition. The first goal is we're going to have to generate, collect, and test properties of hydrogen. Which properties are we testing for? Same types of ones that we were last time. Uh, we want to see, does the hydrogen have a low density? Does the hydrogen expand? Does the hydrogen diffuse? Does the hydrogen have fluidity? And these are all characteristics of gases that we want to see. Does the hydrogen possess those? And then last but not least, we want to see how does hydrogen gas compare to oxygen gas? Are they the same? Are they different? Let's find out. All right, so first thing we have to do is we have to uh, create uh, our hydrogen gas. So this time, uh, we're going to do a reaction where we take zinc metal and we react it with sulfuric acid. Now, because of how single replacement reactions work, anytime I put a metal that's active enough with an acid, the metal is always going to go after the hydrogen portion of the acid, displacing the hydrogen. So if you remember, when we're doing replacements, we want to go by the old name for the acid. So sulfuric acid used to be hydrogen sulfate. So what happens is the zinc wants to kick out the hydrogen. So we end up with zinc sulfate plus the hydrogen. If we wrote some formulas for these, zinc's a one word, not a Hoberfinkel. So it's just the end. Hydrogen's plus one, sulfate's SO4 minus two. So if you cross those down, you get H2SO4. Zinc's a two, sulfate's a two. So they'll cross and reduce away. And the hydrogen is a one word. That's a hope or All right, And that equation comes pre-balanced. Right, the part that you guys are getting more and more experience with, right, but are still gonna need a little bit of assist, is physically what do these guys look like in the real world all right so a lot of you have experienced zinc before you guys know it's a solid like sulfuric acid that's what we call aqueous all right which means it's liquid based but there was a uh, stronger acid dissolved inside of it right, the zinc sulfate that one you definitely wouldn't know. Right? That one's aqueous. You'll learn later on if you keep taking me that anything that has SO4, except for a few exceptions, 
uh, dissolves in water, so it breaks apart and it'll disappear. And then the H2 obviously must be the gas that we're concerned with. So that's how we're going to generate the hydrogen. And then what we need to do is we need to be able to collect that thing. And last time that we did this, we used a method called uh, water displacement. And we're going to employ that method again today. Right, so you guys had that thing last time called the generator flask. And just like last time, you're going to have a funnel. And you're going to have your vent two. Coming up out of it. And the reaction is going to occur inside the Erlenmeyer flask. Right, so what we'll do this time is we are going to cover the bottom of it with zinc rocks. Then just to help the acid interact with the zinc, Right. We are going to put just a little bit of water in there. Right. And then, just like last time, right, we are going to use a pipette and shove that pipette inside the funnel to block it. And the pipette has our H2SO4. And a difference between this one and last one is we don't need a catalyst for this. Remember last time we had the manganese dioxide to speed things up? This reaction occurs plenty quick on its own. So when we inject the H2SO4, it's going to hit the zinc. They're going to react. We're going to get ZNSO4, which is going to stay dissolved in the liquid. And we're going to get, hopefully, a bunch of H2 gas molecules that want to go up and out. Now, right away, you're confirming some things about properties of the gas. Right? If we can manage to collect the H2 using water displacement, you know it equally has a low density, right? like the oxygen did, because it's able to push up through the water because it's less dense. So if you remember the setup from last time, we have our trough. Trough gets filled two-thirds of the way. This time, we're only going to do two bottles. All right, that bottle there. All right, we're going to do two bottles. That'll be filled with water to start. And then we'll connect with our Bunsen burner tubing. And when the H2 gets here, it's going to go up, pushing the water out. If we're able to accomplish that, we know that the hydrogen has a low density. We just confirmed one of the properties. So if all goes according to plan, we should fill two bottles. And at the end, uh, a test tube. So the generation of the hydrogen is a little bit slower. It uh, doesn't burst as much as the oxygen does, but we're filling a whole less bottle. So hopefully the collection uh, will go fast. Uh, once we get those bottles filled, uh, what we'll do uh, is we'll run the same series of tests, uh, except for one, uh, on the hydrogen gas that we had on the oxygen gas. All right, so let's get back into the lab and make this happen. So I've got to unplug you guys. It's just like last time. Very similar setup. So you guys up here. You guys can see what's going. First thing I'm going to do, get my pneumatic trough. Fill that guy. Two-thirds of the way with the warm water. And then what we're going to do is take two glass bottles and a test tube and put those inside of it. And then you remember we use our glass plates to do that. Okay, so just like always, I'm gonna spin this 
drop around so that my release valve is facing over the sink. And then I'm going to fill my two bottles. And if you remember, we just overflow those, cover them up, and we dunk them. And test tube, we just dunk onto the bottom. All right, so our collection area is ready. Now we need to set up our generator. So if we're gonna do that, just like last time, I'm gonna take my Erlenmeyer flask. This time, on the bottom, I am gonna put zinc rocks. All right, so these are our zinc-based material. And you can see that they're safe to touch, just the metal. Do that. And I wanna cover the whole bottom of the zinc. Right, so we get a good looking flask covered on the bottom. And like I said, I want it to be about half covered with the water. And that is to make sure that we can get good interaction between our acid and our zinc. All right, now I'm gonna bring my acid over. You can see we're working with the three molar. H2SO4. In terms of wearing gloves, the H2SO4, it can burn me to be sure, but it's not like the hydrogen peroxide where it's going to bleach my skin. So we actually don't need gloves for this one. We just need to make sure that if we see a little acid, touch our hand, we wash our hands off. And at the very end of the lab, always make sure that we wash our hands. Uh, so just like last time, I'm going to set up a little bit of an apparatus because I'm by myself just to help me hold my Erlenmeyer flask in place just so the weight of the tube doesn't tip me over. And so we're going to put our tube on, try to angle this so that you guys can see what's going on. Okay, so we have that guy here. And I'll slide this guy over a bit. All right. And just like last time, going to take a pipette, going to shove the pipette as far down into that tube as it will let me go. And then I'm going to hold the bottle and the tube. And I'm going to inject. And with this one, it takes just a little bit longer to get going. And it might start bubbling on my second pipette. There we go. So the hydrogen generation is a bit more uh, slow and steady when we fill these up. Now, one thing you can do while you're waiting for me to fill up these bottles, just like we would do while you were gathering, is you can start setting up your lab report. If you flip to the back page, you guys are going to see that you've got 
uh, a title that you need to do. You've got a purpose. This time we have a material section and a five-part conclusion. The rest of what you are seeing is going to be in the packet. So title, purpose, and a five-part conclusion on the separate sheet of paper, and that's all getting stapled to the packet. All right, title, purpose, materials, and five-part. And then your procedure, your data tables, and your post-lab questions, they can all be inside the packet. It's so like you said, this guy, slow and steady, but it just keeps generating. And just like last time, what I'm looking for when this bottle gets close to being full is bubbles on the surface of my trough up in here instead of inside the bottle. That tells me that bottle is filled. And if you guys want to fast forward to where the bottles are filled, I will not be offended. I know it takes some time here. Okay, sure enough, looks like we're full. So we'll lift that guy out, move him over here. All right, so we've got one good hydrogen bottle, and now we're on to round two. But a little science going on here, right? Notice these bubbles right, are going up through the water. So we have confirmed the low density of the hydrogen gas.
slowing down just a little bit. So we'll try one more pipette. Right, so this bottle almost ready. So that guy looking full. So we get our second bottle out. Put them down over here. And then don't forget, we got to fill our chest tube. So probably one last pipette. Now we'll see if there's any life left in this one. Doesn't look like it. So we'll go one more new pipette. This guy over here. And then we'll inject. And the good news is 
the test tube fills very quickly by comparison. And cover that guy up. And set him over here. Once we have that, just like before, it's cleanup time. And I'm going to take my acid back to the middle. There'll be a separate beaker for the pipettes that we've used. So we just toss the empties next to it. Taking my tube off, set my generator off to the side just for a minute. And slide the water, break down my generator. This time, the zinc is reusable. So what I'm going to do is fill this guy with some water, make sure... We're trying to make that acid as safe as we can. Rinse my zinc rocks off in hand eyes. We know good things are happening when it stops fizzing. And because I'm not seeing any more fizzing, what I'll do is I'll take my zinc back over to the middle counter. And we'll just dump the zinc in the middle where I can dry it later on and reuse it for another class. All right. And then just like last time, just got to get a nice clean, dry station for us to do our test. Right, so I'm going to dump out my trough. I tip my trough off to the side. Take my generator. Give that a quick dry. Off to the side, go ahead and dry my tube. Set that off to the side. My glass plate here, not hurting anything. Put him there. And then give the counter a quick wash here. Just be careful when you're over by your bottles. Okay, so we get the counter nice and dry. And now, we are setting up shop to do our test. All right, so for you guys, hopefully by this point you have your title, your purpose, your materials, and your five-part conclusion almost done. Can't conclude till the very end, All right, but you can do those first couple. All right, we're heading into our data table. All right, and the tests are described here. I'll walk you through those. And your data tables are back here. All right, so for our first test, we're going to test for fluidity. I'm going to test my test tube to hear or see if the hydrogen is there. And then wait 30 seconds and see if it's still there. Now, one of the main differences that we'll see between the uh, hydrogen and the oxygen. Oxygen facilitates fire. So a glowing splint or an on-fire splint uh, stays burning or uh, relights. Hydrogen, uh, if it gets near a little bit of oxygen, is combustible. So release a little bit of a bigger package of energy. So we tend to hear our response, which is why uh, this experiment is often called the barking dog experiment. Um, once upon a time, they said it sounded as if somebody stepped on the tail of a dog. So you'll hear this like yelping or squealing sound if it confirms the hydrogen is there. So in your data table, it might be two things, what we hear and what we see. All right, so what I'm going to do is going to set up my Bunsen burner. And remember, the burner over here is simply just to light my wooden splints. We're keeping that nice and far away from our substances. All right, I'm going to get my wooden splints and I'm going to turn on our gas. Okay, 
get my burner on and lit over here. All right, so my burner's lit. You can take my word for it. But like I said, the function of the burner over here is simply to light my wooden splits. All right, so the first test I'm going to be doing is on the test tube. And I'm going to test for fluidity. We're going to test it there at the beginning. If the hydrogen is flowing out, we should see or hear some sort of response. So here's my glowing splint. Take my test tube. All right. So I saw the flame jump and I heard a popping sound. And now I'm going to wait 30 seconds. And I'm going to test it again. Testing in a second time. There it is again. All right. So in fact, all right, we got some barking sound. Two different times we confirmed that the hydrogen flowed from the test tube on two different occasions. All right. So I'm going to put my test tube away. Wet this split. Put it off to the side. All right, and now we're getting ready for round two. All right, so round two is going to be on this bottle. This bottle, we are testing for all right, diffusion. I'm going to test the top five, and then I'm going to test the bottom five, all right, to see if hydrogen is in both locations. So I'm going to like this splint. And then the first thing I'm going to do is going to test it right by the mouth of the bottle. I'm going to pop. And then I'm going to test it again all the way up inside the bottle. All right, definitely there as well. All right, and that jumps out at me a bit more. So we had a popping sound in both the top of the bottle and the bottom of the bottle. Uh, and just like the last experiment, I am going to take an air bottle, that bottle I just tested that's now empty, wash it out. I'm going to stack it on top of a bottle that we believe to have hydrogen. Let that mix for five minutes. So on my clock, it's uh, 838. So at 843, all right, I'm going to go and test those. Uh, in the meantime, you guys could be Jumping into your post lab questions, you guys simply have the ability right now to answer as numbers one, two, three, uh, and four, right, and seven. So you guys could be working on those during this five minute window.
Okay, so it is now 43. We are going to test our two bottles, and what we're testing for is the idea of diffusion. All right, so I'm going to have to test the top bottle, and I'll test the bottom bottle. If they both relight and or bark, that means it diffused. If one does but not the other, no diffusion. If neither do, we lost our hydrogen. So here's bottle one. Okay, it doesn't seem like anything happened there. Try this one into bottle two. Okay. All right, so looks like for some reason, which happens, I, our hydrogen somehow escaped. Maybe we didn't have a perfect seal on the top. Right? But my observations for that right, are going to be right, flame stayed lit, flame stayed lit, which for you guys is going to indicate missing hydrogen. All right, So we can't confirm or deny the diffusion. And like you said, you never get to control the results of your experiment. Sometimes we see what we think we're supposed to see. But at the very least, we always have to explain our observations correctly. If I went and said, yeah, sure, our hydrogen diffused, that doesn't make sense based on what we saw. Right, so the key is making observations based on what you see. So uh, rest of the time for you guys is to finish up that uh, lab report. Uh, I'll be around for any questions. Shoot me a message, and I'll be checking in on your breakout rooms from time to time. Other than that, good luck to everybody.